purpose of this exercise was, uh, was to uh, place a servo within a wing to operate barn door type spoilers. Um, the idea was uh, to work within the confines of, of the wing, how to operate the linkage, what shape the linkage, where to put the servo and so on and so on. So I made this up in 3D CAD. Uh, the box actually here uh, represents the the wing. What I've done here is added a servo, uh, which is a equivalent of a HS85 Metal Gear servo, is the mini ones. So, what well, our first task uh, in the design is to get uh, an output arm in a position where I, I can use the full turn of the arm which is like just less than one half turn the only way you can get a, a half a turn on the arm is to block the servo up from the bottom surface of the uh, wing panel so that is a six uh, millimeter spacer there uh, so now i'm able actually to get a full full almost half turn I would say that if you imagine a qu clock 30 minutes is a half a turn and it's like this is turns usually turns around uh, my average server will turn around in about say 25 minutes of travel so uh, that is the setup that's all to scale the linkage installed uh, and I've altered this around this takes quite a bit of messing around trial and error to get right to get the full uh, throw that I've desired, like you know, and uh, so what we actually got now is um, will be or the output arm. Uh, we got 17, they are 17 uh, millimeters long. Uh, this little particular arm here is um, 18 millimeters long, 18 millimeters out from the hinge and five millimeters out from the, the wall of the flap and to show this actually in operation uh, you can see it's doing the full necessary travel so you see how this army comes below the, the level of the servo in the closed position here I've modeled the uh, the servo holder so you can see the the, the actual the, uh, base this will raise the servo six millimeters the slots are for the uh, servo mounting to slide into and I've put, I've put two small holes in the top where I put a, 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 a thin piece of plywood over to hold the servo in position but um, this uh, will be made out of 3D printed out of PLA. This is the whole idea of the um, the exercise here is to use alternative materials rather conventionally you make, make this up out of plywood or whatever and glue it arrow data or whatever together. In this case I'm using uh, 3D printing techniques and so on. The interesting thing about this is that PLA isn't the best thing in the world to glue. So I've made some little pockets to trap glue and so on in and I need to play around with different types of glue to make it, find out which actually will stick to uh, I think it's balsa it could be pl thin ply but I think it's balsa inside the wing uh, from this stage we, we save that as an STL file and use our STL file um, let's dump it on the ground Now that'll take, I don't know, 25 minutes to uh, print up. So we can, uh, relatively like construction, uh, fill density is only 25%, so uh, but it's perfect for holding the servo. So we, we 3D print that one. Okay, so I actually built the, uh, or rather 3D printed the uh, servo mountain. And there's, um, the idea is, is to, it's a, quite a shiny base where it was built on a build plate. So obviously you use some coarse sandpaper to buffen that up. 
then the de to decide which uh, how to cement it into the wing and um, this is notoriously well I found out I found that it's quite notoriously difficult to uh, to glue it with any sort of permeability at all so uh, a permanent sort of attachment so uh, I've been experimenting a bit and uh, I've come up with uh, this is wicks but it's like solvent cement it's the stuff that you use P PVC pipes you join them together with like, like domestic pipes like from your sink and so on overflows and uh, you got a, a brush in the contained within the lid so it's easy to paint it on, on both surfaces and stick it together and let it dry well uh, I did a test I did a test um, and glued this on to the plywood and it's really strong so I'm, I'm very happy pleased with that uh, just a, a point of interest when I that was the prototype the first prototype I, I'm actually made with the idea that uh, the server work could fit in it is slightly tight on this one but uh, on, a, on a second prototype I raised the, I made a larger gap there slightly so it would fit easier but I realised that if I did the same gap both sides that cut away there if I had a cut a, a equal cut away this side it would mean I could put the servo in either way so it would be fairly like universal so the second prototype was in fact this one with the equal cutaways slightly deeper than than there as you can see it didn't need to be a lot and a bit of a lightning hole actually the lightning hole grips better as well I thought so uh, in this case we got our servo which is going to simply slot in there a no slack fit but easy to fit in a little strap across the top, power strap across the top, two small screws to hold it in position. Now that output arm, which I've already made out of some fiberglass sheet, can go well below the uh, bottom of the uh, servo. So that is 17 millimeters. What I needed from the from the axle to the um, to the hole operating hole. This is this is the wing and this is the uh, air brake in question. That's the compartment that I can put the servo in. Now because of the um, well it just needs to be sometimes things need to be built accurately. The servo accurately must um, be raised up six millimeter the output arms has got to be their respective more or less exact lengths and the uh, the horn will have to be mounted exactly I think it's 19 millimeters up from the hinge that'd be the, the hole in the operating point of the, um, the horn itself 19 millimeters up from the hinge so anything less and you're not going to get the full movement that uh, I planned on so uh, this is an example of this lock fitting in so I can glue that both on the front bulkhead there or spar and on the lower surface it is bolster and I can still actually pull that servo out to change him or to tighten up the uh, any t uh, uh, screws in the output disc so uh, it can be anywhere in there so it is a fairly tight fit and it's exact and it works fine so that's the plan you can get these old boxes in a number of place outlets like you know in this particular case these come from Alford's uh, like various little sort of uh, fiber washers or whatever spring clips and so on uh, I was in a, I was searching for something I wanted some t-shaped extrusion in plastic for to make the horns for the 
for the uh, air brakes and uh, you can imagine if uh, you cut up some one of these or something like this you can come up with part of the back or part of the bottom and a part of the division I've got uh, several here I've cut out played around with and uh, the only trouble is this plastic is like the plastic that comes in uh, you know the, the milk bottle type plastic no, whatever glue you use it just will not stick and I've been trying all manners of methods of actually sticking this to the because the, the the flaps in question are quite thin a thin ply and that's the end of it like you know it's not like a thick surface or anything where you can sort of cement them in so again I've come this has come to the rescue this solvent cement for PVC piping I've did a trial in fact I've done a couple of trials the last trial was that that's the piece there uh, the last trial was there Overnight, it sticks in about 10 minutes. Overnight, it goes off completely. Um, it was quite strong, but because this is bendy, you can actually peel it and pull it off, which is a bit unfair, really, because it might happen to many things if you can if you could bend it enough and peel it off. I mean, this is more rigid, so it, it won't peel off. So, but the thing is, the forces applied isn't great and they're like pushing and they're not pulling although pulling it this is strong enough to resist pulling it's only like the shear and the tearing that it can't withstand in that position for instance if that was operating irregularly on the end there it might start lifting on the end and start peeling back but you can easily stop that with some tiny self couple of tiny, tiny self tappers just to uh, initially stop it peeling so uh, get them from model fixings and places like that a little tiny self tapper to go in or come through from the other side so again I, I'm going with that um, I'm using for the operating rods I'm going to use 0.9 mil piano wire uh, and I'll use uh, 1.2 mil holes in the plastic to uh, so I let the lows the elbow to go through once this start once this stuff's bent up. This is just a test of uh, laser cutting this plastic. So I'm going to just see what happens. I'm using 20 millimeters a second at a power of 20 percent and a distance of 20 mil. So here we go. Straighten that up a bit. Test two, this is twenty five percent power, everything else the same. I can show you in better light but that was quite good and it also didn't really go in, it smoked it a bit but it didn't actually cut into the up vertical part so I just want to do a couple of tests now on tiny holes and see how much they get enlarged this is a one millimeter hole I'll try uh, see, see what happens Well, that whole size was fine for uh, a shank of a, a 1.5 mil self tapper. So it uh, enlarged itself roughly by, by a 0.5 of a mil. But for a tapping hole, I've gone to one. That's 0.25. So I want to see how that works. <laughs> Oh, 
I'll try that one out now. I'll also include a 0.5mm I think so. We'll check those out. I've uh, cut two more. This was the ones I was <coughs> already trying to cut out and uh, drill, which I could have done. No problem at all. I just wanted to try out the laser cutter and just see how it worked. So as you can see, these are virtually melted through here. So, I could have used more power, but I didn't want to melt it. I wanted to cut it. I didn't really want to melt it, though, you know. So what I'll do here is cut the up verticals. One. Two. Three. 